you think this fight is going to go the distance? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, obviously, you've trained for trained for twelve rounds as always, and we're prepared for every uh, every possibility. You know, whether it going early or or late. Um, I've been really improved my engine this camp as well, so be able to fight at my usual high pace. Um, but I don't believe it will go twelve rounds now. He was just talking, Tommy was just talking about how he believes he's the more polished boxer and that he thinks he has the better skill set than you. Having watched him on film, what are you seeing and how do you assess him based on what you've seen? Uh, yeah, he's he's more of a traditional boxer, a bit more amateur style, uses his feet and his, you know, flicks his shots and drops back and stuff. Um, but this is professional boxing and, and skills aren't just like the amateurs, you don't just move your feet and, and flick shots and score shots. It's it's about breaking people down um, and knowing when, what to do when you're not throwing punches and stuff like that as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's his, his style. Um, and I think he can only box that way. Um, but I can box, I can box, I can, I can fight. And I think I've proven that um, a lot already for, in my previous fights. He doesn't have obviously the the KO percentage that you have. Do you think that he has the power to keep you away from him for twelve rounds? It's cruiserweight boxing. Um, I, I don't believe so. But also, I'm not going to allow him to just hit me at will. Um, my last fight I probably took too many shots off a fairly heavy-handed lad as well. Obviously, I think uh, Vasil had you know only one fight of his or a couple of fights he hadn't stopped out of his wins. So. Um, yeah, I've been in there, plenty of heavy-handed people, Richard Riappo being one, um, and haven't been hurt. So I don't believe so, but, you know, the right shot in the right place, you, you, people can can get hurt. But for me, I, I don't believe Tommy will hurt me in this fight. Um, I think that my, my skill set will, will, will take away all of his, all the power he does have. Um, yeah, and I think that the punch power in this fight could be could be the difference. Thank you, Chris, and best of luck to you. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. If we go to David Mohan next, please. How you doing, Chris? Hi, David. Our thanks. Chris, this fight was announced after Tommy had beaten Jure the last time out. Um, he fairly gave it with both barrels in his post-fight interview based on the tweet leading in that week of the fight. Um, you probably sat and watched that. What did you make of that? Um, I'm sure you were smiling, thinking that this fight's actually signed and sealed and maybe I'm getting under his skin a small bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw a lot of uh, interviews that week with him, people, you know, saying that he, I'm a step back and um, and all these sort of things. And, you know, which is, you know, fair enough if, if he thinks that. But, um, but yeah, so I needed to do something to get him in the ring. And, and thankfully, thankfully it worked. Sure, this fight obviously was sent to Tommy as well. It's a, such a massive opportunity, a domestic fight that really brings your profile to completely new heights with... British Commonwealth European titles in the land and a potential world title fight next. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, there are three belts that you want to win during your career. Every you know British boxer wants to go that sort of route, the British Commonwealth and, and European before they go onto the world stage. Um, so it's a massive platform for myself, and um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a, a real good opportunity. It's nice to be you know having a European title fight with a bit of needle there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a, a great opportunity. Grand stuff, Chris. So thanks a million. All the best. Thanks, David. Take care. Thanks, David. If we go to Jonathan Nagy off next, please. How's it going, Chris? You good? Hello, mate. You're right. Yeah, good. Thanks. Um, how does this fight compare to the other domestic fights you've had? You mentioned the Riappel fight and how much was on the line in that one, but with this one, that how does it compare? Yeah, I think um. It, it reminds me a little, I feel a little bit like the Craig Glover fight. You know, there's a lot of, a lot riding on the fight. There's a lot of opportunities off the back of it. Um, and that's how I felt going into the Craig Glover fight. Um, obviously, I had the experience of the React Pool fight before that. Um, so, yeah, I feel, I feel like similar camps as well. Um, probably well, a much better camp, to be fair, than, than the Glover one. But just the, the way everything's worked out. Um, it feels very similar to the Craig Glover fight for, for myself. Um, going back to an arena where I boxed before, the Craig Glover fight, I'd boxed at the Echo Arena as an amateur and was looking forward to it. Um, so, yeah, the uh, I think 
with this, obviously I boxed at Fight Camp last year. This time there's going to be more fans, um, which will be nice. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's very much reminds me of the Craig Glover fight. He said that he's one win away if he beats you from a world title shot, given the rankings. Do you feel the same or do you think there's still other fights you might have to have before a world title? Yeah, I've, I, um, I could have the world title fight next, probably. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have conversations after Saturday, I'm sure. Um, might need a couple more to because I, I think with... I get the feeling with Tommy, he's looking to box for a world title. He's not looking to win one. And there's a, there's a difference because once you, you train to win a world title and you train to stay there. Um, and I think that's the different mindsets between us. I think that's, I want to develop into a more well-rounded fighter. I think this fight gives me that opportunity uh, and the experience, but also, like I said, like there might be a couple more fights before a world title shot or, maybe an eliminator in, in the meantime. And I think, um, yeah, I think that's how I look at it. I'm still a relative novice, really, um, con considering, you know, the the pro game. Uh, not many people win or box the world titles in their first 15 fights. So, um, yeah, I probably would need a little bit more experience, but I'm nearly there. It's just, like I said, I, I want to make sure um, I'm very much a bit of a perfectionist. You know, I, I live live the, the life of you know, don't drink anything like that. I'm always in training, um, and that's all to to make sure when I get to that level, I can win a world title and stay there. Good luck, Chris. Cheers, John. Take care. Thanks, Jonathan. If we go to Ames from Boxing News TV next, please. Ames here from Boxing News TV. Pleasure to speak to you, Chris. How's life? Yeah, all good. Thanks, mate. You well? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Chris, you host the Perfect Athlete podcast, which I'm waiting on the next instalment. By the way. Uh, this way. But part of being the perfect athlete, as I'm sure you'll know, you know, ones that get to the top of their respective sports, the mentality, the mindset is on another level in terms, in terms of the way that you've approached this fight, one where there's needle there and also the highest stakes so far in your career. Has the mentality adapted in any way? Yeah, I think um, I'm always like... With, with the podcast, the whole point of it is to find out those one and two percent that, that make athletes better in whatever their sport may be. Um, and that's the same with me. I'm always looking every day for, for whether it's a quote or a, a way to train or something to improve as an athlete. Um, that the mindset side of things, I think sometimes in boxing, you need that bit of needle. You need a meaningful fight. Uh, no disrespect to, to Vassal Dusar, but... That fight was late notice. Um, obviously, I've been told I was fighting Dion June in November, and then again in March, and then last minute, uh, a few weeks before, we, we got the, the change of opponents. So very, very hard to get up for a fight like that. But, um, you know, we got the job done. That was the main thing then. Um, and this fight, obviously, it's got that that bit of needle there, and there's so much riding on it, it you know, from the start of camp, um, which started pretty much the Monday after my last fight. I was back at running every day. Um, so, yeah, I think that that bit of needle will, will give me that. Um, it's given me that, you know, push basically to make sure I, I am performing at, at the best of my uh, capabilities. And with my final question, I'll ask you the same question I asked Tommy. Uh, with the win, should you um, get it at the weekend, you will send a message to the cruiserweight division. What is that message from your perspective? Just... You know, I'm I'm always looking to get better and, and improve. I guess the message would, would, would be is that I live the life and I can box in many different styles and adapt really well. Um, and I guess that would be the message. Wish you all the best at the weekend, Chris. Thank you. Cheers, Ames. Take care. Thanks, Ames. If we go to Chris Ridgeway next, please. Hey, Chris, you okay? Hi, mate. You're right. Yeah, good. Just a couple of quick bits from me. I can't see you. I think I've lost you, but. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, ah, there you are. Yeah. Um, a few people, e even on this call and on the last one, saying that this could potentially be the the fight of the night. With no disrespect to the other fighters, do you do you think that? Potentially, yeah. I mean, you, you never know what what um, in boxing you can't predict what's going to happen in certain fights. Sometimes there's there's fights that look like they're going to be stinkers, and then they turn out to be class fights. So you never know. Um, but I think with the with everything was on the line, you know, none of us are going to, neither of us are going to just 
lay down and, and let the other person win. There's so much riding on it, so it's going to have to be, you know, a real big push um, mm. for for to, for the other person to to get out of the, to get the other person out of there. So um, yeah, there's a uh, I guess that bit of you know having the three belts, British title fights over the years have produced unbelievable fights as we've seen. Um, so yeah, quite potentially this could be another one. With all the talk of potential world titles, what's next? How hard is it for you to, to stay focused on this one? And do you think maybe your opponent, who's talking about maybe fighting in a world title fight next, do you think he's been distracted at all by it? Um, I don't think so. I think you, you use that as drive, you know, because there's nothing beyond this fight at the moment until you get the win. So um, all, all I'm focusing on is performing in this fight. And that, that is all that matters to me. Um, you know, the next five days is is, is what is my future. Uh, beyond that, who knows? Um, it's it's just all focus on the on the next five days for me. Okay, cool. Well, listen, all the very best for Saturday. Cheers, Chris. Take care. Thanks, Chris. If we go to Charlie Parsons next, please. You all right, Chris, mate? How you doing? Hello, Charlie. How are you, mate? Right? Yeah, all good, bruv. Um, we've spoke on WhatsApp for a long time about this fight. It feels like forever it's finally happening um you called for it how excited are you to finally be given the opportunity to take that european strap and then progress potentially onto world honors yeah i mean obviously i we were looking at it after fight camp last year it was spoke about in the post-fight interview and, and we i had obviously chat with yourself as well and that's the fight i wanted um so yeah it's uh for me i'm i'm buzzing i've i've, I've asked for this fight i've got what i wanted and um in boxing, that doesn't always happen, you know, people, the way the business works. But so I'm, I'm fortunate to, to have this fight and I'm, I'm super excited for it. You know, it wouldn't be an interview with me without rustling some feathers. You said Tommy wants to box for a world title and not win uh, a world, potentially. Well, obviously he wants to win a world title, but how he's going in there to box necessarily and not win. Could you uh, develop that a little bit more, please? I just think the way the way he talks and... and you know, his, his mindset is like he wants to fight for a world title next, he wants to fight for a world title. And that's all he spoke about for a couple of fights now. I think he spoke about it after he won his European title. I think he started calling out Maris Breedis, for, you know, at the time, the best cruiserweight in the world. Um, and then, yeah, it's just, I think it's just a bit of delusion there from his part with after that performance. But then, yeah, I think he's just wants to cash out is wants that world title fight so which is you know a, a good achievement he can he can go and he'll always have that it's a bit like um you know becoming an olympian which is a lot harder than boxing for a world title in my opinion um but yeah he he's obviously um just really just the the, the words the, the things he says the way he puts it and it's just the, the mindset behind it for me uh just that's just my opinion on it <laughs>